The Lunar Gateway space station is overweight, and NASA doesn't really know what to do about that yet. This and other tidbits from the Government Accountability Office report that came out today that I read so that you don't have to, but if you wanted to, it is down in the description below. Gateway is a key feature of NASA's Artemis program. It has survived many iterations of Artemis before it was even Artemis, and yet it is still sort of up in the air as to what it's going to look like, all the details and the logistics, the operations, even the capabilities and how long it'll have people on board. I am the executive director of Astrolytical, which is a space consulting firm. I analyze the space industry and I've been looking at Gateway for a while. I largely believe that it is a waste of money and resources. I have a whole video dedicated on that subject if you would like to check that out. But regardless of my opinion, Gateway I do believe is here to stay for the same reason that the Artemis program is here to stay. It is bipartisan and international. At this point, especially since there's already hardware that's being built, it will be very difficult to cancel. So for that reason alone, I want to see Gateway succeed, even if I do believe that it is a drain on NASA's budget. But surprisingly, today's topic is not about budget. It is about mass and some other complications thrown in there as well. To back up, the U.S. Government Accountability Office, GAO, put out a report and they write these for Congress. Congress is the one who allocates the funding for U.S. government programs, such as NASA. And this has a rather descriptive title. It is called... Artemis programs, NASA should document and communicate plans to address Gateway's mass risk. So right there in the title, you already know that the problem is the mass of Gateway and not just Gateway, but vehicles that will attach to Gateway. But before they get into mass, they talk about schedule. In fact, a lot of this report is detailing all of the different schedule requirements and reviews and when things are going to happen when. And if you want that kind of detail, actually a lot of it's vague, there's not a lot of detail, but if you want to go through that, I'm not going to go through all of that in this video. You can read it. The link is down below. But one thing that is sort of surprising that they spent so much time focused on is the three month difference between when they want Gateway to be launched and ready and when they have a requirement for Gateway to be launched and ready. Sounds similar, but two different things. So Artemis 4 is when they envision using Gateway for the first time. And Artemis 4 is currently scheduled for September of 2028. And they want Gateway launched and ready in the right orbit 12 months beforehand, at least. But at this point, NASA is working with two dates. They are working with September of 2027 and December of 2027 to get Gateway ready. And they have a little note in the, in the report. NASA directed its program to continue to plan internally to a December 2027 Artemis IV mission date. But in the very next sentence, they talk about how actually they really do want it by September of 2027. And the reason for this, and I'm quoting again here, this is to allow time for the Gateway's initial capability, that is the two initial components that I'll talk about in a moment, to transit to near rectilinear halo orbit and for the program to ensure all systems work post-launch and check the orbit stability before vehicles dock with the halo. So basically they want to put it in the right orbit and have everything check out at least 12 months before Artemis 4 when it's really going to be needed. Now they spent a lot of time in this report talking about this, but to me, it's much ado about nothing because there's a snowball chance in hell that Artemis 4 is actually going to happen in 2027. It is guaranteed to slip to 2028 or later. So in my opinion, the exact date is less important than the readiness of the gateway components compared to the readiness of the rest of Artemis 4. And even that is not that important because Artemis 3 was initially envisioned to first use gateway. And because gateway was falling behind, they decided that Artemis 3 does not need gateway and and they moved it to Artemis 4. And in a very similar way, they could also move Gateway to Artemis 5 or later. In fact, they even allude to that in the report. But the schedule is important, especially for those within NASA and NASA's partners for making sure everything fits together, which at this point, it doesn't when it comes to mass at least. The report really centered around the fact that all of Gateway's components are over mass at this point, and there's going to need to be trade-offs made. And I'll be honest, a little late in the game, I think that they're talking about this because a lot of these trade-offs probably should have already happened so that decisions can be made to move the program forward but I'm not internal to the program, so I can't tell you what conversations they've had. It seems to me like they should have had these already. And 
a lot of the report did talk about how these things should have been coming out in reviews and they need to have more reviews and, and especially before they start bending metal, but they already have started bending metal. So I'll get to that. First off, what is the initial capability of Gateway? What what are the two main parts of it that are gonna that are gonna be ready by Artemis 4? There's the power and propulsion element, PPE, and that is being built by Maxar. What you're seeing here on the screen is the central cylinder of the PPE. There's no timestamp on this. I know they were doing testing, I think last year so that's probably when this picture was taken the second part is the habitation and logistics outpost halo and that is being built by Northrop Grumman, although first it's actually being built by Telesalania Space so just recently back in June Telesalania that wrapped up the part that they were putting together and then they shipped it from Italy to Northrop Grumman in Arizona. So it's those two parts, the PPE and the Halo, that they want ready 12 months prior to Artemis IV. And both of those components are over mass at this point, especially Halo. I wanted to find a term for you here, co-manifested vehicle. Co-manifested vehicle, CMV. So it's the CMV mass that they're talking about that is overweight. Those are the two components together. Halo being the most overweight, or over mass, I should say, of the two. It says, Halo's mass is the primary driver of the CMV exceeding its mass allocation. And then there is a third component, the international habitat. Remember, all of the International Space Station partners minus Russia are involved with, with uh, Gateway. And so the international module, which the European Space agency is contributing is also exceeding its launch mass and they discuss all of the different trade-offs they're considering not in great detail it's, it's pretty vague at this point but they talked about whether or not they should worry about the initial mass now and make changes and maybe uh, lower performance or lower uh, you know lessen how long a crew could be on board gateway you know make those kinds of trade-offs or maybe it's a logistics vehicle which will bring the additional mass afterwards and the logistics vehicle by the way is a spacex dragon x XL. There's very little known about Dragon XL at this point. The only thing we really know that is public, at least, is that Dragon XL is a cargo vehicle to bring cargo to the gateway and take away trash. And so it could be that there are trade-offs with what they initially bring with those two components, the PPE and the Halo, and then they later bring more with Dragon XL, or they simply bring less stuff. And it sounds to me like those trade-offs are still being made at this point in the game. Another major part of the report has to do with SpaceX and any other vehicles that come and attach to Gateway. So not just Dragon XL is envisioned to attach to Gateway, but if you remember, Artemis 3 and Artemis 4 are missions to bring astronauts to the surface of the moon with the human landing system. And Artemis 3 and 4, it's the Starship human landing system. And Starship is gigantic. It says in the report that program officials estimated the mass of the lunar lander Starship is approximately 18 times greater than the value NASA used to develop the PPE's controllable parameters. So what they're concerned about here is that the PPE, the, the power and propulsion element of Gateway, will not be able to control gateway when Starship is attached because Starship will just dwarf the rest of gateway. And I could go off on a tangent here about how gateway is just not even necessary at all when Starship exists, but I won't. <laughs> Instead, I'll talk about how NASA and the GAO are concerned that if Starship and any other vehicle that is visiting is attached to Gateway, that the PPE will not be able to control the integrated stack. That's what they call all of those vehicles together. They are looking at two ways to mitigate against this or to, to correct it. The first is, is to have visiting vehicles such as Dragon XL or Starship to share some control with the PPE when docked with Gateway by firing their thrusters for a period or to require docked visiting vehicles with a mass greater than these original parameters, such as Starship, to control the integrated stack when docked with the gateway. So basically, if Starship is attached to Gateway, Starship takes over controlling the Gateway. The second way that they're thinking about correcting it, and I don't see how this could work, but they're looking into it, is making changes to the control algorithms for the PPE to improve control throughout the entire docking process. And they did mention if neither of those options work, then there might just be requirements set in terms of visiting vehicles. Although I don't know, they didn't specify what requirements those would be. So all of these problems, and especially the mass problems, if they don't fix this, if they don't get a handle on it, then it could lead to schedule overruns and budget overruns. And 
there's already schedule and budget overruns, but even more so. Right now, they still haven't gotten to the key testing and all the different reviews that go along with testing. And so they are concerned, NASA and GAO are concerned, that once they get into testing the different components of Gateway, that they will run into more problems. So they really need to get the basics down right now in order to get this under control. They write, NASA is at risk of building hardware that could need significant redesigns that would increase cost and delay schedule. And then later they write what I already previously mentioned, if NASA decides to make changes to its mission profiles, it could result in changes to planned timeframes or the anticipated concept of operations for the Gateway program. So in other words, they could change what Gateway's meant to do. There's a lot that they could change about what Gateway's meant to do since it's really convoluted at this point. They could change timelines like they already did, moving it from Artemis 3 to Artemis 4 and then they could change, they could move it off Artemis 4 if they needed to. They only talk about Dragon XL and Starship in this report. They do not talk about Blue Moon. Blue Moon is the vehicle, the human landing system that's contracted for Artemis 5. It's being built by Blue Origin. And I'm super curious if these similar problems are popping up with Blue Moon as well. Or perhaps Blue Moon is not even envisioned to attach to Gateway at all, but I don't think that's the case. Docking Orion to Gateway and then docking Starship to Gateway and having the astronauts transfer, transfer from Orion to Gateway and then Gateway to Starship is simply a way to justify the existence of Orion and SLS and Gateway. It's really not needed for any of the missions of astronauts returning to the surface of the moon. Starship doesn't need it. Blue Moon doesn't need it. I am going off on a tangent again, but it is truly not needed. It is an extra. If NASA had all the money in the world, sure, Gateway's great, but it doesn't. And so it has to make compromises, such as ignoring the fact that Gateway is not a sustainable part of Artemis, even though the report and a lot of NASA language uses the term sustainable in relation to Lunar Gateway, Gateway is only envisioned to last for about 15 years. And it is being built. All the attention is on Gateway. All of the money on Gateway is at the expense of Artemis Base Camp, which would be sustainable. It mentioned in the report that ISS, the International Space Station, was also envisioned to only be about 15 years and they got a, a significant extension. However, the environment of low Earth orbit is gentler on hardware, less radiation, and ISS is continuously crewed, whereas Gateway is further out, more radiation, and it is not continuously crewed. One piece of information that was in this report that I was not previously aware of is that Gateway could be uncrewed for up to three years. So if, if they're envisioning a scenario when astronauts are not even going to use Gateway for three years, I just, I just don't see the point. But you make your own decisions. My biggest concern with Gateway is that we are spending all this time, all this attention, all of these things have not even been set yet, so it's definitely going to be delayed and it's definitely going to be over budget and all of that money all those resources all that time is going to something that's only going to last 15 years when instead we should be focusing on Artemis Base Camp the Chinese are focusing on their base camp on the surface of the moon and we are not we are largely ignoring the actual sustainable part of Artemis and if you all think that 15 years is a long time ISS has been up there over 20 years thinking back to 2009 if you remember the Constellation program, they were gearing up to launch Ares 1X this time 15 years ago. They hadn't even launched it yet. That was October. So if you remember that, then you can appreciate the fact that 15 years is a short period of time when it comes to somebody's career, somebody's lifetime. I would rather us spend that time, spend that energy, spend that money now for something that's going to last. That is really going to contribute to our greater understanding of the moon than Gateway. <laughs> Especially when you consider that 15 years from now, will SLS and Orion still exist? I, I can't see a world where SLS and Orion, or at least the SLS part, is going to continue flying when Starship is operational, when other alternative vehicles are readily available. And so, to me, NASA is putting all of this effort towards something that is temporary. You could argue that you know all space hardware is temporary, but I would like to see a world in which by the time I retire, by the time that I am gone from this world, we have a lasting lunar base. That's the future I want. You let me know in the comments what you think about the current Artemis architecture with Gateway, whether you think we should be doing things the same way or differently. And uh, go ahead and watch that Gateway video next.